Hello, everyone. Welcome to this series on customer value resources. We're talking about 2021 compared to last year in digital experience, customer experience, and employee experience. And specifically, what's vital and what's trivial. So I have here Ian Stokel from Melbourne, Australia. Uh, Ian, could you describe your role right now? Yes, I'm the senior CX manager at Monash University, which is uh, one of the prestigious universities in Australia. And I think we rank 55th across the world in the world rankings. Wow. So tell me what you're seeing as the most pressing thing in terms of digital experience, employee experience, or customer experience. What thing seems to be trumping the rest? Is it digital? That's my guess. Well, of course, digital is the biggest focus across most of the industry groups that I have connections with, with retail as well as uh, the, the uh, health services area and now uh, the higher education area uh, because people can no longer really move freely as they used to and have physical experiences at stores or at universities on campuses or inter interactions with each other in the health area. Uh, the digital environment has become such a critical way of maintaining one's business uh, viability. And uh, some organizations were already uh, digitally competitive before the crisis happened and found the transition to be less painful than others who weren't as digitally ready. So digitally, digi di being digitally ready has got a lot to do with uh, one's business model. It also has a lot to do with one's technical architecture. And a lot of older organizations find it really difficult uh, to become digitally competitive because they, they have a lot of technical debt, particularly with, uh, uh, with technology stacks that are very tightly coupled. And uh, for, those of, for those of you who understand what a tightly coupled digital ar architecture means, it means that every time you try to make a change, it creates a very high risk of failure across the, the whole system. And so organizations that have gone for more loosely coupled technical architectures, um, like microservices, uh, whether it be with Amazon microservices, or Microsoft microservices, the whole range of different technologies out there, find that they can properly use agile teams and do rapid pivots in the digital space without the risk of bringing the whole business model down through some systemic failure. Whereas older, larger organizations where a lot of, there's a lot of sunk cost in the technical architecture find it incredibly difficult to pivot or make changes to their experiences online without enormous ramifications of systemic failure. I, I guess uh, the must have is starting to look at uh, technologies that let you pivot quickly because we're working, we, we're working in an environment where uh, customer behavior is changing very rapidly. Uh, we, we're starting to see emerging behaviors where even as restrictions lift in some areas, people are not so confident about returning to the, work, the ways that they used to interact with organizations. And so organizations need to be a lot more flexible and a lot more adaptable than they used to be. So um, it's really important to start investing in the area of digital experience that allows you to pivot without causing your whole business model to collapse. All right. So adaptability, being agile, being nimble. And it's Absolutely. And agile doesn't just depend on your development teams being agile. It's a fit to, you, agile teams need to be bookended by good UX design and forming the agile teams, but also DevOps that allows the implementation of new ideas to happen without catastrophic failure. Right. So an agile approach, but also organizational agility. Two Absolutely. different things, but related. Yes. <laughs> it's absolutely critical because the alternative to uh, organizational agility is that people are working weekends and nights in order to deliver things that uh, change overnight and, um, and it, it absolutely exhausts the team, which leads us to the EX component. All right. So what do you see as being a must-have now that used to be uh, nice to have? Well, it's such an interesting paradigm that we're living in, in the employee experience, because what I'm seeing across the board, across the industries I do have contact with, is a lot of compassion from employers to employees. 
uh, the appreciation for mental health, the appreciation for people's uh, sense of security and um, safety has been higher than ever before. Uh, and yet we live in uh, paradoxically in the fact that no get employer can guarantee an employee continued employment because uh, the income streams are so uncertain and unpredictable right now. So typically when things are so unpredictable and uncertain, so volatile, organizations tend to uh, have very short-term planning. Uh, they put a lot of contractors and people on short-term contracts. They're not hiring, they've got hiring freezes, and um, there's an air of uncertainty with everyone, no matter how big the reassurances are. There's also nowhere to jump to, because everybody's in the same boat, if you like to think of it like that. So, yes, I, I'm finding that uh, our leaders in particular are, are, are putting a lot of emphasis on reassurance without uh, sugarcoating the reality of uncertainty and expecting people to behave like grown-ups and surprisingly they are. So I think when you treat people like grown-ups and tell them the truth but support them with the truth you get the best results instead of hiding things or obf obfuscating things or pretending like they don't exist. So transparency. And in transparency and treating people maturely and, um, and, and taking things head on and, and, and the timing is really important. Don't wait a week to tell your people what your decisions are. Um, and I find the leadership that I happen to work with incredibly mature and responsible towards the employee experience. It's been really amazing to see the degree of maturity of leadership. Awesome. So I noticed that when you were talking about digitalization, you mentioned that the employee parameters and the customer parameters were actually drivers of how you should decide to do digitalization. So what are you seeing as you know, one of the key things that's vital now for customer experience that used to be viewed as a nice to have? <laughs> well, having a voice of customer program is critical um, and a robust one and a real time one. A lot of times we rely on surveys that happen once every six months or once every year. Other people have too many surveys that happen at inappropriate moments. Uh, during the uh, customer experience life cycle. I think right now it's really important to be listening. Um, yes, there's a lot of emotion out there. Not all the things you hear are things that you need to or should respond to, but to get a general sense of insight and understanding of the behavioral changes in your community, in your various audiences or cohorts, is really important to understand where things are headed or seem to be headed. Uh, but not to assume that that's the way it's always going to be. So I think organizations have never faced a higher need to pay attention than they have, as they need to have right now. Being able to then contextualize that and present that data in a way that executives can make rapid decisions, because that's the only value of that data, is to help the decision-making engine make confident decisions. Absolutely. So Ian, you're a CCXP or Certified Customer Experience Professional. Can you tell us what you feel is the most valuable thing you've gotten from that certification? I don't think there's one most valuable thing. There's a few really valuable things. I think the most important thing is the confidence to know uh, what tool to use when. Uh, the CXPA has got such a robust framework of informing decisions that a CX leader should take and make. Uh, it's given me an extraordinary amount of confidence in the way I manage my team and the way I communicate to the C-suite. The second thing is the fact that CX, the CXBA community is so approachable that if I've got a problem, I can reach out to any other CXPA or CX, CCXPA and, and ask a question and get such an enthusiastic and supportive response. It's an extraordinary small but growing um, global network of people that are so eager to help, not only customers, but each other. That's what I found too, Ian. Well, thank you so much for participating today in this Customer Value Resources series. And I welcome everybody to try out the Clear Action Value Exchange that actually does bring these customer experience, employee experience, and digital experiences to life in helping you to influence ease of doing business and ease of work.